Welcome back to Turf Talk, Baffert at the Breeders' Cup edition. Ed DeRosa alongside Gary Young, and Gary put you on the spot right away with Bob. Is he going to have a Bobby Frankel Breeders' Cup or a Richard Mandela Breeders' Cup from 2003? Somewhere in between the Some, two. Somewhere in between. Somewhere, somewhere in between the two would be my answer. Well, certainly loaded a record four in the classic, uh, sort of reminiscent of Aiden O'Brien's Epsom Derby uh, entries. Uh, has the Breeders Twin Spires Breeders' Cup sprint favorite. <laughs> Distaff with Abel Tasman, uh, loaded. Loaded. And we know he does well at Del Mar, so he knows he likes to win here. Uh, we'll start with the classic, though. Quartet, uh, arrogate to me the most likely of the four. But as you said in the intro video, no reason to sleep on West Coast. Collective, of course, won the Pacific Classic here. Move Taish coming off a grade one win. Uh, he's he's not putting in fillers no 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 there's there's not any 50 to one shots in there just because uh the owner wants to see their horses right. running the breeders <laughs> cup no he's he's bringing he's bringing some heavy ammunition and from what you've seen of their training uh similar styles i mean a lot of comparisons west coast and arrogate because of the way west coast has come along as a three-year-old for me West Coast didn't run the highest Brisnet speed rating ever like Arrogate did in the Travers. So it, it's, a, it's a tougher comparison for me as a numbers guy. Certainly understand it from a form perspective, but uh, you know, what do you make of their chances? You know, West Coast isn't near as flashy in as, in, as Arrogate was coming into last year's Classic. Last year, he, uh, you know, he totally demolished that feeling in the Travers. And, uh, Paid for my rent last summer at Del Mar too in the process, but he uh, he uh, then followed that up with a string of just unbelievable works coming into the classic, and you could tell that last year's classic was pretty much a mano a mano right, match race least. between Arrogate and California Chrome. The betting indicated that, and from the three eighths pole home, you That's didn't have to you didn't yeah. have to look at any you other horses. Looking, yeah. No, you weren't looking to see who was running third <laughs> and coming on. No, um, you know it's. Uh, uh, West Coast, I've I've always kind of been a fan of, and you know when he uh, when he went to Keeneland and he ran well, but he didn't really get the job done. I thought, you yeah, know, but he uh, he definitely found himself the second half of the year. His workout started improving. Um, you know, his race at Los Alamitos when he went over there was kind of weird because coming around the turn, it didn't look like he was doing anything. Then he kind of the light bulb <laughs> went on and he just flew down the stretch. His race at Parks was, was, you know, I mean, he blew the start and totally lost all focus coming in the stretch and still won by five mm -hmm. lengths. I mean, that was, that was, you know, that was like, okay, this horse deserves a shot to run in the Classic against these older horses and see what he can do. Um, now, those three things you mentioned with Los Al and then the start and the light bulb needing to go on at Parks, I'm not sure how that will play against this field. Yes. Anything you've seen in his training that might allay those concerns, or is that something that you should worry about if you're a, a backer of his? His training has showed no indication of doing anything like that, but let's face it, he will not be able to make any of those mistakes and no. beat this field. Right. He's, he's going to have to break correctly. He's going to have to put himself in contention, wherever that might be. And he's going to have to, when Javier asked him, he's going to have to kick and not lose any focus like he did coming in the stretch in, in parks. I mean, partially that was in part because he was three lengths in front. He's probably not going to be three lengths in front coming think. in the stretch no, here. Not with Gunrunner in there. No. And Baffert Southern, that, that brings up the pace. Move Taij could benefit. Uh, but to me, of the, the four Bafferts, it seems like he got his grade one. Last time was the time. Uh, the, the betters and myself least likely winner of the four yeah yeah I mean nothing against the horse he's been a hard campaigner for a long time uh, I think he would need a total pace meltdown to win this race yeah. I, and, and other I horses not to bring their A game yeah. I think he'd need a combination of those two things all right well very eager to check that out and we'll have a classic distaff double uh, discussion later in the week and get some actual picks but uh, Baffert well represented in other races some think maybe the most likely winner of all the Breeders Cup races is the defending Twin Spire Sprint champion Dre Fong and of the horses we've heard works about, gun runners stuck out to an extent, Dre Fong maybe even more so uh, for the sprint. Dre Fong's works have been off the chart. Um, you know, I imagine in a perfect world if Bob had his druthers, he would have liked to, he would have liked to have been the one drawn outside of Tackaful instead of Tackaful mm -hmm. drawn outside of him. 
But uh, as long as Dre Fong breaks with the field from down in the two hole, he's going to take a lot of beating. He, uh, he's, his race after he made the left hand turn here, uh, uh, here when he went back east was in the forego was off the charts and his workout since then, his gate work before he came down here was, it was terrific. Mm. It was terrific. Head to head, would you take Dre Fong or any Baffert in the classic? So you get uh, all four uh, in the classic, wow, wow. or you get Dre Fong in the sprint? Wow, that's a loaded <laughs> question. I'd probably go with Dre Fong, and not just because I respect Gunrunner so much. Uh, no, I probably would yeah. go with Dre Fong, but it's, that's, boy, you really threw a heavy-duty <laughs> question at me there. Well, we try to come prepared I for these. Uh, well, la last of the big ones uh, d in the distaff, three-year-old Philly championship, definitely on the line with Abel Tasman in a late. Uh, butting heads. Abel Tasman got the better of her last time. Controversial maybe. We'll decide it here certainly if one of them wins. Uh, I know you were very high on her early in the year and ran into <laughs> some buzzsaws here and there. Got the job done in the Oaks. How's she coming into the distaff? Abel Tasman? Yeah. Is, she's, she worked very, very good. Uh, she's, she owes me no money. I mean, uh, between I, her main win and her low sell, she's She's been very good to me, and uh, she's trained terrific for this race. Um, I think they've found that they just need to have her covered up. The race at Parks the other day, she was down inside, and uh, there was no one in front of her, and she kind of saw daylight, and she did like Vince Lombardi told his football players. She ran to daylight, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, she got beat, but I, I think she's came out of that race and trained very well for this race. That being said, I mean, Elate was on the track this morning and she is a, she is a massive, shiny, black yeah, filly. I mean, she's, she's you know, I, whoever finishes in front in that race of the other one will probably be a deserving winner of the Eclipse Award. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say that's fair. And we saw that back in 02. Uh, Fardo Amiga couldn't get to Azari, uh, but won three-year-old championship off finishing second. But yeah, I mean, yeah. either one could win this for sure. For sure. Uh, so we'll talk more about the distaff uh, later in the week with that classic double, and we'll get out. We'll get out of the Baffert discussion on this. Kind of ironic. He's so loaded. Uh, Baffert, very known for his two-year-olds, especially here at Del Mar, certainly will not have the favorite in the juvenile, and maybe his best is McKenzie, who debuted last week. Uh, but w what do you make of his chances in the two-year-old races? If you know, Salamini drew a good post, but um, there would be, need to be a huge switch in form between him and Bolt right. Dioro. I mean, <laughs> if, if uh, the one thing you can say is Salamini, <coughs> excuse me, drew a good post and Bolt Dioro is kind of parked out there, there in the 11 hole, but uh, I don't really see Bob winning the, the juvenile this year. Yeah. I don't. And, uh, you know, he might turn out to be a, a horse that improves in his three-year-old year, Salamini, but he's kind of carries his head a little funny, and I don't see him winning this race this year. All right, well, uh, four Breeders' Cups wins is a tall order. That's Mandela's record, and I mean, right there with Woody's five, I think, to win four Breeders' Cup races in yeah. a day in terms of training feet. So we'll see what Bob has in store, but uh, looking forward to talking with you more about it as the week goes on. We will be here, won't we? All right, sounds good. Thanks, Gary.